healthcare acquired infections and role of advanced technologies. So what is the correlation basically? And today, what is the concern today is in a global healthcare system? Why there is a big noise in healthcare acquired infection? So I think we all know that as a definition by CDC, healthcare acquired infection. Any infection occurred to the patient who is hospitalized after 48 hours of admission, basically. So as per the decision, this infection is called healthcare acquired infection. So what is the challenge today? The basically, the patient who has been treated in the hospital for the, the particular indication or infection, while moving out, he is carried out with a different infection unknowingly. So don't you think this is the biggest challenge today? So, World Health Organization, which is revealed that every 15 out of 100 hospitalized patients, they will develop one at least one HAI in any given point of time. That, that's what uh, they have concluded. And what are the major healthcare acquired infections which are seen in the healthcare facilities, mainly surgical site infections and catheter associated urinary tract infections and ventilator associated pneumonia and the central line associated bloodstream infections. These are the four commonly seen healthcare acquired infections in a healthcare facility base. How it get transmitted basically? Again, one more important evidence that out of all these HAIs, there is 22% HAIs is getting caused by improper cleaning and ter sterilization. There is a world uh, nothing but uh, reprocessing basically. So any improper sterilization, I can say the rep uh, reprocessing technique will lead to these, like rising the healthcare acquired infections basically. What happens if we don't treat? So there is a biofilm during the reprocess phase, there is a biofilm formation which is happening in the outer surface of the instrument. Once biofilm is formed on the instrument surface so the bacteria within the biofilm so it's very difficult to kill and it has a strong resistance everybody knows that because we are in a healthcare segment and the second thing each and every instrument which has to undergo in a different uh, sterilization technique whether it is an autoclave machines or ethylene oxide uh, sterilizer or plasma sterilizer ultimately some sterile end has to act on the surface of the instrument so that the sterilization can complete. So if in processing technique, it will not contact to the sterile end, ultimately the process will not get completed. So obviously the most common bacteria which is seen in the particularly laparoscopic segment that is MOTT, that is mycobacterium other than tuberculosis. These are the three major factors basically which is causing due to the improper sterilization. So why, what, why actually we are not able to uh, like complete the total process? Is there any concern for the instruments because of the instruments or structural damage? Yes, of course. If you see the earlier ancient days, how the surgeries which used to happen, mainly all are very open. Later on, we have evaluated to the laparoscopy, that means single incision we are doing the surgery. Then further, now we have evaluated to the robotic surgery. So is there, anybody can comment that, you know, what is the like uh, main uh, evaluation with respect to change of the instrument design? Don't you think there is a complexity? If you see any instrument, what we are using today in any procedures, uh, starting from the lab coli to the radical prostate, in the, these are the critical proce procedures. The the, comp uh, the the design, there is a so much complexity which has been designed. So the more the complexity, what is the concern? The each and every instrument which is using, used by the patient basically, it has to go for the complete the reprocessing cycle. So it is throwing a big challenge 
So it's very difficult to complete the reprocessing cycle like the earlier days. So that is the reason today Association of American Medical Institute, they strongly recommend that whatever the instrument which you are using, kindly take the medical device manufacturer approval that whether this instrument can be sterilized, if, if so, on what me method it has to go for sterilization. So now, which of the department is taking the responsibility of the whole reprocessing? We all know that there is a department in the each and every hospital that is Central Sterile Supply Department. It's known as CSSD. So unfortunately today, across the globe, I would say that this is commonly considered as a cost center. Can anybody can give one, one example that, you know, why it is considered as a cost center? I think there are seniors, uh, definitely they can answer this question. Why it is considered as cost center? Yes, it's very right. So the moment every year they get a hospital management, get the requirement from the particular concern units that we want the, the particular uh, endoscope which got damaged and we need a second endoscope and we need a second arthroscope which is getting damaged, we need a second uh, arthroscope. And the second one, the another one is the micro instruments which most tend to damage because of the reprocessing. So every year they had to allocate, you know, somewhere around not less than at least 20 to 30 lakhs. So that is what, you know, always, you know, the CSSD in India, they are seeing like it's always, you know, considered as a cost center. Here, what j, &J as an advanced sterilization product, which strongly says that CSSD cannot be a cost, considered as a cost center, it's always has to be considered as a revenue center for the any healthcare facility. So we have one interesting data. So there is a 800 bedded Indian multinational multi-specialty hospital in a metro city. They have evaluated without the advanced technologies like the plasma sterilization and with the plasma sterilization, is there any outcome measures which has been changed? with respect to the overall cost versus benefit. So is what is the methodology here? So every day, they get all the loads from the different departments, orthopedic, cardiology, neurology, and the critical care, even ICU consumables also. So they are segregated as six types of loads. And there is a cost incurred. Of course, when they're running the cycle, there is a cost incurred. This cost varies from 50 rupees up to 950 rupees depends upon the type of load what they are using. If it is a critical load, it's a standard cycle, if the flexible endoscope, you know, they need to run an advanced uh, cycle. So that's all the, uh, the cost varies basically. Now how these cost manage? So the patient's charged basis, so these all the sets which, uh, which is going to the patient whether it's a lab coli, starting from the lab coli, all the procedures based on the therapy which is undergone, there have been patients that have been charged in a day bill basically. So if you see the approx, if you see the overall cost, there is a 2% of the procedure that has been charged. So now after like uh, the steroid is installed the 2.5 years uh, before, the total duration as of now they have considered is the 2.5 years. So what was the outcomes basically? So normally as uh, like the gentleman said that the common common cost for the every year which is incurred that you know re whether it's a repair cost is the minimum thing you know. Any any biomedical engineer from here? No, no. So biomedical department, they know that, you know, what is the spend, how much spent, you know, they, every year for the instrument uh, repair. It's all not less than the cost of a two lab sheets. That's a common thing. So that has cut down almost 60% uh, year to 60% after switching it to steroid system. And replacement, 
replacement so they have to every year due to suppose if the serration got if the serration got damaged then they need to replace the microseizures and uh, if it is a neurology the kerosen punches it's very commonly they replace in every department so that the almost 52 percent de uh, decrease they have seen and if the conventional method they have to use almost 2 lakh liters of RO water every year which is not seen with the steroid system because the steroid to operate the steroid there is no RO water required they need a different cartridge which is a H2O2 of course to operate one steroid cycle it is costing one unit of power as compared to any other conventional sterilizer which takes 2.5 unit for this uh, running a single unit. So what is the main uh, I can say hidden benefits basically there is a huge reduction of inventory and it, it's always facilitates you know any given point of time it is giving you know ready water uh, readily OT. So anytime you know the patient they can recruit the IP patient. Suppose in, you definitely you all know that the if it is a ETO cycle the patient surgeon has to wait for 14 hours in order to recruit a patient for the OT because to complete the cycle it will take minimum 13 minutes with include includes uh, aeration which is aeration is not required to operate the steroid system so the total duration is just 28 minutes so that's what these are the hidden benefits have been transferred to the recruiting new OT like uh, new patients IP patients to OT so overall if you see that an average the instrument repair cost from 2238 rupees to 0.32 as an average per instrument which has come down it's a huge saving to the hospital how the device looks like you see
the floor is open for Q&A session. If you'd like to ask any qu uh, questions uh, to our speaker, uh, Mr. Gangadhar Rao Kosana here, yeah, you feel free to. Article of mentioned you know, in the hospital setup, <coughs> there are many heat sensitive items which you cannot auto click basically. So that is what, you know, there is a concept of sterilizing in a low temperature method. So, the common, most common instrument which is used in the hospitals are stainless steel. Only stainless steel instrument or sterilized in auto okay. There is no other, uh, even though the manufacturers recommend, you know, this is autoclavable. Given uh, autoclavable scopes, which is autoclavable, but no hospital facility sterilized cameras even in the scopes in a steam sterilizer. They are always prefer the low temperature of metal. So here there are two uh, two sterilizers. One is the ADO, that is the inoxic sterilizer, and plasma sterilizer. Both operate operationally with this is 45. So that is the feature of the sterilizer. Here again, any sterilizer, definitely there is a defect, and simultaneously there is a side effect also. So you all know that when you are sterilizing the scope, you don't see your machines. So there is a rod lens. In every scope, if you see the structure of the scope, there is a rod lens in the scope. So that rod lens, there is a different like uh, panels which is located there. Each and every panel, and after the third cycle of the auto cycle, like, this tends to get damaged, and obviously the surgeon has to go for another scope. So, definitely, that is what you know, they always prefer the low temperature sterilization method. So, same thing, even the tubings, there are many tubings which cannot you know, be used in this thing. So and uh, but efficiency wise it is the same only. Yeah, of course. Well, efficiency, uh, the killing rate is same. Whether it is CPU or plasma, killing rate is the same. Okay. Only the time and outcomes also. Suppose ETO. Again, you know, whatever the item you know, if you want to sterilize, the ETO is you can sterilize the ETO. The problem is that the surgeon has to wait till 13 hours in order to complete the time to get the instrument back to the OT. And the second biggest disadvantage is a known carcinogen. <coughs> Ultimately, along with the instrument, something else in the carcinogen. See the ethylene oxide when intact with the water, the outcome will be then like oh, this is a known carcinogen. So that is what industry sophisticated setups they have completely literally banned the video usage. During the financial concerns in India, still we recommend the ETO as an alternative service. So, and what about UV? UV? Sterilization. Ultraviolet. Irradiation. Yeah, UV, it's again uh, UV radiation itself. Of course, again, it's a low temperature radiation. Of course, it's very much, very much used in the industry in the music. Studying that also will. Thank you.